Hey everyone, this is our Excel for Data Science part two video. So be sure you go back and watch part one, but now we're gonna get into manipulating data. So part one covered how to enter data and keep it in tidy format. Now we're gonna get into how do I manipulate and calculate numbers I might be interested in. So I've got a data set here working where we have our participant number, gender, and three items. So what we really wanna work with is maybe calculating average scores. So we're gonna start by looking at a couple of functions. Let's look at how do I calculate an average maybe for each item. So what you can do is we're gonna use the functionalities, um, the functions part of Excel, which normally makes people a little nervous, but what you do is you type equals to bring up the fact that you're gonna start a function. And then the function for calculating the mean is the word average. You hit open parentheses to tell it what to do. What do I calculate the average of? And then it shows you an example of number, number, number. But the easiest thing to do is to click on the numbers you're interested in and highlight them. So you wanna calculate the average of C2, that's cell um, C, which is in column C, row two. So this cell here through, that's what the little colon stands for, cell 11, so C11. And it's the stuff you have highlighted, but you can actually hit comma and just keep highlighting if you want it. Or you can highlight a whole set of columns. But right now, let's just highlight this first column. Okay. One thing you don't want to do is highlight the cell you're working in. So let me show you what happens when you do that. So let's say equals average. And let's say I accidentally get gung-ho in my highlighting and I highlight the cells that I'm working in. It's going to give you a circular reference error. A circular reference error means that you're trying to calculate a number at the same time in a cell that you're going to put that number. So don't do that. And it will actually just say zero because it doesn't want you to do that. So we can do this a couple more times. Or instead of typing them six, eight, twelve times, you can click on the box and use this drag functionality we talked about in the last video. So wait from your plus to go from white to black, drag over. Okay. I'm gonna put it in a bunch of cells that don't have anything in them to show you that when the cells are empty, it gives you divide by zero error. That's okay, we'll fill them in a minute. But what that does is it brings Miss to this point about references. These references are called relative references because it's relative to the column that it's in. So C2, D2, E2. So when you drag a reference, uh, when you drag like going this way, uh, what's happening is it assumes that you mean that you want it to be relative to the column that it's in. So it's gonna change this one from C2 to D2. If you don't want it to do that, you have to use a fixed reference. Fixed references are created by using the dollar sign or there's a function key that you can use as well. Let's say I wanted to calculate the mean with a fixed reference. So let's do average, okay. and I want to highlight all of this. Okay. These are relative references because they do not have dollar signs. I can put the dollar sign in front of the C. That would make sure that it always stuck with column C. Now let's see what happens. Okay. So now when I drag, it assumes that I want column C the entire time. Okay. Um, I could also do column C and two through 11. So this would fix the entire set of cells where I would always use these no matter what happened. It would always use this uh, C2 to C11. Okay. Versus if I didn't fix those, I could change it to C12. And then the last option is to only fix two through 11. Highlight those again, or I could just fix two through 11. Okay. Now when we drag across, it's going to change the D's to uh, the C's to D's and E's. Okay. Now using a fixed reference is really handy when you're trying to maybe subtract everything from the mean, uh, like how standard deviation is calculated, or if you are trying to keep it always through column C. So there's a good time for those most of the time you're gonna be using relative references and that drag and drop functionality is gonna be really handy. Um, but 
understanding that there is a difference between fixed and relative references will help you do other um, functions later. All right, so we've covered that. Now, if we wanted to create an, we've already created an average, so we can also do it this way. Ooh, spelling. And I'm gonna leave these blank for temporarily. So now I've got C2 through F2. So C2 through F2, because we're going across instead of down. And you'll notice that when I filled this one in, it filled in uh, the number down here. So you have to have at least one number. And I could double click on this and it will automatically fill in the entire column for me. Well, the, one of the biggest problems, when, especially when it comes to data science, is you wanna know when there's a missing value. <laughs> and so one caveat to the average function in Excel is that it will calculate and ignore missing values. Um, so if you uh, have missing data, you probably wanna put something in that data frame like an NA, but it also ignores text values. So you kinda have to figure out what to do with um, missing scores. And so one thing you can always do is like click on the FX button here for functions and look at um, look at how these functions work. In our particular case, there's not a whole lot you can do with Excel when it comes to missing data um, for the average. It will auto calculate the average no matter if there's a blank cell or not. Okay. So uh, let's try sum now. So it's equals sum highlight all the numbers you're interested in. And now we can double click on this and it'll fill in the sum for us. Now an interesting thing when it comes to sum, this is where fixed versus relative becomes important, is let's say I wanted to just kind of move it over one cell. If I drag and drop it here, it's gonna assume a relative reference. And so now it has moved everything over one. And maybe I didn't want it to do that. So that's where a fixed reference might be good to tell it to keep the column numbers the same, but change the, the, the uh, row numbers. Yeah. So I could go in and say, no, no, no. I just wanna move this column. We could cut and paste it as well, but just showing you how fixed versus relative works. Oops, I didn't want that last row. So I'm just gonna drag it through here and I could move it over one. And now it's still C2 through F2, but and now on the second row, it's C3 through F, C3 through F3, and C4, C5, et cetera. So let's do average on sum. Now my favorite Excel function, so much so that I found a way to do it in R in the same way, <laughs> is VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is really handy if you're trying to join different data sources together by a common column. So if you're a SQL person, this is kind of like inner and outer joins um, or a merge, you might think about it that way. And so uh, you have to do this one column at a time, but VLOOKUP is really handy if you have data in several different places. And the data in one place is bigger than the data in another place. So what I did was I put more data here on this other one and I left a blank one so you can see what happens when you have missing data. Um, and I could just cut and paste this, but let's pretend like this is like really hundreds of lines long. And so I can use VLOOKUP. Okay, so I'm gonna do equals VLOOKUP, open parentheses. We're gonna pick a lookup value. So this has to be a unique identifier for each participant, comma. Go to where the table that you want to look up in is, so where the extra data is. Highlight that table. Now you could highlight it like that, or you could just highlight the whole set of rows, columns, just depends on how your data is formatted. Comma. Column index number. That's what column do you want to pull? I want column two, okay, because I'm interested in item four here. Um, a quick warning is that the participant number here the lookup value needs to be in the first column in your table you're going to. So wherever your extra data is, the participant number or the unique identifier needs to be in the first column. Okay, that's the assumption here in Excel. Range lookup is true or false. Generally, you hope that there are not duplicates, so we'll go false. Yeah. Um, and you can learn more about VLOOKUP again by clicking on here, type VLOOKUP. And it explains to you a little more about how that works. So if you say true, it gives you the first closest match. 
If you say false, it tells you the exact match. Since I'm doing participant numbers, I want an exact match. Now, this is where referencing becomes important again, because now if we use relative references, um, it could screw us up. Okay, so let me go back and do this one one more time. Okay, so I'm going to do VLOOKUP. I want to say lookup, oops, not that one, uh, A3 here. I'm going to highlight just this data. I'm going to say column two and then false. So the difference here is that in the first cell, I highlighted the entire set of columns. In the second cell, I highlighted A1 through B11. Okay. Now if I double click on it here, some t we'll see what happens with um, relative references here. So if I did A1 through B11, so that it highlighted just that table, and then very next cell, it gives me A2 through B12, and A3 through, through B13, through which can be problematic if the first cell is the one you need. So uh, if you're going to use VLOOKUP, either use fixed references or highlight the entire column. So preferably fixed references. So this would work. Or A1, like fix the entire cell. So don't ever change what cell that's looking in. I didn't want to do that one. Rats. So I'm going to drag and drop here. And so what that has done is has pulled every single person's piece of data from here and pasted it over here. That's really handy, except for one thing. What happened is, is since there's nothing in this cell, but that participant number is there, so it's just a blank cell, it actually imports a zero. So be sure you're paying attention to that because that zero is problematic. That is not actually a zero in the data set. That is a zero because this assumes a zero. So always have some sort of marker for your NA data. So now it's going to pull NA. Um, or uh, if you don't have the line, so let's say seven just doesn't exist, what you'll have, what you'll see is this sort of marker. Now when you have this sort of NA code, now the rest of your functions will not work. So that may be a good solution if you want it to warn you that the um, the cells aren't there. But that's because this is a VLOOKUP cell. I think, don't quote me on this. Yeah, okay, no, it still stays. So this is the way that you should mark NA values if you don't want the, um, the functions to calculate if there are NAs. Sometimes you do, it just depends on your goal. Okay. Let's put that seven back. Okay, and we're just gonna say NA in here. Okay. So that seven's there, but it's a missing value. So at least that sort of left alignment, because it's text instead of numbers, which are always right aligned, kind of gives me a good visual clue. But it can be hard to miss if you have thousands of lines. All right, now we've done VLOOKUP. Let's do one more standard deviation, which is equals STDEV. And then I could highlight the cells I'm interested in. And I could use the same set of functionality by dragging across here. So we've done the average, the sum, VLOOKUP, which is a very handy function, standard deviation. Let's talk a little bit about how do I fil filter and sort my data. So if I really wanted to filter the data, I probably wouldn't want these columns here. But one trick is to just insert a blank line. Okay. Now it kept those references where they were. So inserting the line did not move the, the calculations down. So that's nice. You can click on the data tab click filter. Well, this is where you could change I only want to see guys or I only want to see girls or maybe and there's so many options here. Um, let me put them everybody back. Okay. But by including that blank line it ignores everything below the blank line. So it's filtering the data but not any of my calculations. Okay. Here I can say only in A's. So I could say includes Here's includes. Okay, well, it assumes that this is text. <laughs> so you can also sort by clicking ascending and descending. So I could say equals NA to only pull the NA values. Or I could say does not equal NA to only show me the true values. But you'll notice here that the numbers down here are not recalculating. So it's only going to, it's going to calculate the cell even though you've hidden it from yourself. 
Okay, so filtering does not recalculate the numbers for you. Uh, another thing you can do is sort, but be very careful with the sort function that you do not disconnect the data from its participant number. So I can sort just the gender column, but Excel kind of tries to help you out by saying, oh, you want to sort everything, right? So you can sort one column at a time um, independent of the other columns, but I don't recommend it because we want each person's unique data to stay tidy, to stay with its own row. So I don't want to sort gender and not sort the items because then I've disconnected that person from their actual data. And you can sort by multiple things. So uh, the good thing about having participant numbers is I always can go back to the original data set. So you'll notice that here, it's kind of given us this little triangle because that function or that formula is not the same as the rest. So when, um, when I created this before, um, these two don't match. And so that's why we're getting this little triangle here. It's because they don't, uh, they aren't the same formula. And so it's kind of warning you that you're doing two different things. They achieve the same goal, um, but I am using two different functions. So I could fix that by dragging and dropping. So you notice it's still four. So the other good thing about VLOOKUP and SORT is that the numbers stay together. One warning with VLOOKUP though is if you have thousands of lines, VLOOKUP will slow down your data exceptionally, depending on your computer. So what I will do sometimes is after I've merged them together is I'll copy the column. So control C and I will paste it. So home, there's a set for this, but it depends on if you're on Windows or Mac, but paste values. So once I've merged it, I might get rid of the VLOOKUP because sometimes when I'm working with data sets that are 100,000 lines long, that can make my Excel uh, document run very slowly. Okay, with 10 lines, not so big deal. One last thing I wanna show you is pivot tables. So one problem that we're gonna have when we get into the data analysis pack function thing is that um, you can't calculate statistics by group. And um, I could sort everybody and filter them and calculate just on that as filter. So I could sort by gender and then do a mean for females by typing in average, open parentheses, and highlight just the girls. But the problem is if I sort that data, now it's going to change. So let's just resort this data. And now that changed. So it's not um, a really good way to do that. And then the data analysis pack also does not have a very good way to do that. So what we're gonna do is use pivot tables. So those are under insert and then pivot table here. And you wanna highlight the data that has just the data unless you want to sort the mean or use the mean, but we're gonna ignore that for a second and just use the data and not these extra columns that we calculated. And we're going to put that in a new worksheet. Pivot tables are very handy. So let's say I want to get the average score by gender. So I'm going to put gender in here under rows. And that gives me each category label here. I can drag items here into values. And the first option that it's going to give me is sum. Let's make this just a little bit bigger so you can see. Click on the I button for information. And there are all kinds of options. You can count how many people are, how many people have valid um, pieces for that. You can calculate the average for each item. So it's like, so that's the average for item one for each gender. I can calculate the min, the max, standard deviation. So I could drag this item again and get the maximum. Drag it again, so I can calculate as many numbers as I want. I don't have, I'm not limited to one and get the standard deviation of that item. You could do the same thing for item two. Um, what's really neat is you can also do this sort of cross tabs wise, um, if you're familiar with SPSS, uh, where I could for each of the second item calculate the same statistics. I think that gets a little confusing unless you are talking about categorical data, um, but this will allow me to calculate uh, scores by group which is a, uh, a handy function because uh, none of the other ones, none of the plugins do it well. 
and I could do it manually, but it would take me a long time. So this way I could get the mean and standard deviation of each item um, by group really quickly. All right, so that's our very brief video on um, Excel for data science using functions, thinking about uh, fixed and relative references and how to work pivot tables to your advantage.